Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being your show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Hit Monkey Season 2, Episode 2. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, the opening of this episode revolved around... We get we got little context of it last episode when Haruka drew the blade, but now we get even fuller context of the person, Warlord or whoever it was that had this sword. I'm assuming that's the first person, and so I wonder, did the blade corrupt him or was the blade corrupted by the evil of that person who just slaughtered everybody? I mean, we saw the yellow eyes, so it probably was like... Maybe that wasn't the first person, but the fact is, you would you would think we would start at the beginning. So maybe that was the first person. They had this blade enchanted, and basically that like it was almost like the the soul of the sword combined with his own soul, and basically he went on a slaughtering spree. Spree. I'm curious in that scene. It was actually like. I don't know, it's so effed up, but it was also dope when he swings the blade once and there's a line of people and everyone's heads get cut off at once. I doubt he did like a, a I doubt he did like, you know, the draw the blade quick slash thing and, you know, I doubt it was that. I think it was probably just like an artistic representation of like, well, yeah, just like go cut everyone's head. Or maybe he did swing it so hard, just literally cut everyone's head at once. But kind of like, yeah, kill man, woman, child, anyone that got in their way. So we don't know about this Thing, but we do see that it is corrupting Haruka more and more that she's drawing upon it. power. It's like, it kind of reminds me of Iron Fist in regards of Danny being like, oh yeah, like he started to realize and like, yeah, I kind of started lighting up. I was I fighting not for good or trying to vanquish evil. I'm just looking for an excuse to light up the Iron Fist. Haruka's kind of going through that right now where it's just like she's looking for any excuse to draw the blade. In fact, it irritates her when Monkey stops her from drawing the blade multiple times throughout the episode. But it's like, yeah, it's, it's corrupting her more and more to the point she doesn't even have to draw the blade. It's already corrupting her mind where it's like we see like the blade hasn't even been drawn and her eyes are already Growing, glowing yellow it's already kind of latched onto her it's kind of that same mentality that Bryce had well Bryce learned it from Elwin and obviously he taught that the monkey of once you pick up a gun you're going to be holding one for the rest of, once you pick up a gun in violence you're going to be picking up for the rest of your life Haruka's kind of going through that right now so I think it kind of feeds off like even though she was good natured and stuff like that I was about to say like she's killed someone because she killed lady bullseye but it's like that i mean wasn't really a self, it wasn't really a self-defense situation you just straight up murked her but eh, you know but it's not like haruka's like a bad person i was wondering like does it feed off the badness in you uh maybe it affects haruka the way she is because she is such a good person that it it's it's easier to corrupt the uh, non-corrupted so far or maybe because there is seeds of darkness in her it fed on it and fostered what it's doing to her right now Either way, uh, our trio goes and visits uh, Eunice trying to figure out who set them up. And Eunice had made a promise last episode, like, we'll massacre their asses, anyone that kind of screws you over. And, you know, and that was Bryce's whole point of like, oh, yeah, like, she will do it. Uh, she he she specifically said something else last episode. And Bryce is like, oh, yeah, she'll do it. I know it because I've I, I seen her do it myself. Uh, we meet Buddy and Gatling. Uh, I wonder will we I hope they become like recurring characters because Gatling seemed pretty cool with uh, Monkey but uh, Buddy does it because Buddy's like oh yeah I, cl I clean up like stuff like after stuff goes like after a crime scene he was pissed at Gatling because there was so much like blood spray and everywhere so like Eunice is like all right going forward like focus your shots more but it's like yeah they have to work together to try and um, figure out like who set this up. And even Eunice doesn't know because it is the, the nature of compartmentalizing everything. Like not the left hand doesn't always know what the right hand is doing. So it's like it's you go through a vetter who set up the deal. So Eunice only knows the vetter, but it's like to protect everyone in this or like that's how we do it in the criminal world. And it makes sense Haruka, who isn't a criminal, coming into this wanting things to kind of go her way, you know. So definitely her and Eunice are gonna continue butting heads. Makes sense. Like this is the criminal world and Haruka is a cop, but not really. She's not even feeling too bad about the people she's murdering. I mean, to be fair, she kinda let it slide last episode of like, whoa, 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 the monkey's not gonna do any hits. Fine, we'll let him do some hits. She's kind of letting a lot of that stuff slide. I mean, he was full vigilante. He's killing killers, and Ido was kind of fine with us a little bit. That's kind of rubbing off on Haruka, too, but I think it's also like, right. She's just, she stopped questioning it, and she's just super fine with slashing through dudes like nothing. Um, but they go to the library, and they meet 
uh, Rosemary, uh, the person who is uh, the veteran in this situation. And, yep, sadly, Rosemary gets killed. She does give them information. I love that that whole library situation is what it is. Shit is popping off. I guess they're using silencers, so everyone's completely unaware. But I'm like, how is this happening? How Like, that one guy got killed and another person was in the library being like, shh. I'm like, why is this library like this? Once again, it is silencer, so no one's hearing anything. Silencers aren't really actually that silent, apparently. I'm not a gun dude, but I never knew. Like, because movies and TV shows make it seem like, oh, yeah, silencers are so, so quiet. It's like they're quieter than a regular gunfire, but it's not like they're extremely quiet. There's still going to be quite a bit of noise, even with a silencer. So that, that, that was just kind of something interesting. But it's like, yeah, like... Um, like I said, Haruko was ready to draw with her blade and everything. I thought that was pretty dope of Bryce where it just like opens the the uh, blinds to the library and it shines a light and you see like the uh, reflective light off of their guns and they're able to merc them uh, using the books as their respective silencers. And it's like, oh yeah, like it was probably like a pretty old version of Dante's Inferno that got used uh, as a silencer. And the last guy got it super rough when Haruka just drew the blade, jumped up, and sliced him in half, and his body fell down on the table. And that's when everyone proceeded to run. So it's like, yeah, that's that's interesting. But they got the information. I thought it was going, like she said, Alderman. I thought they were talking about an actual Alderman, but it seems to be the name of the organization as a whole. At least the way Charles talked about it later on, he made it sound like it was about the organization. Who knows? Uh, but they had to sneak into the building, which I love Haruka being like, all right, let me knock on the door, try to get in there. Wait, uh, wait, you're not letting me in because I'm Asian? And the Asian guy walks by. She's like, you're not letting me in because I'm a woman? And women walk by. It's like, are you not letting? It's like, no, we're not letting you in because you ask too many questions. So, and I love her just casualness to be like, yeah, we're going to have to shoot our way in. But they luckily snuck in and a uh, poor monkey having to deal with the fact is there's so many exotic animals just straight up being murdered at this place. It's a place of like this like rich and powerful party and they're eating zebras and a koala you're like oh that's 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 all kinds of twisted and monkey having to pretend to be like you know a dish and i even love there is a sensible enough dude being like yeah these people love spending their money on the wild he's like yeah i'm kind of done and just kind of bounces but yeah like the charles like i said it seems very cultish which i think the older men like i said if that is in fact the organization seems to be like kind of a cult thing like it feels like this might be like a satanic thing i don't know if this has because it is interesting like because it might it probably was dante's inferno she was reading because rosemary was reading a book that has um like it had like some biblical stuff but it looked like it was like the devil and stuff but in correlation with like the book that uh monkey used as a silencer was dante's inferno so i'd assume that's what she was reading that's why i was wondering if she was mixed up in any of this or not it doesn't well it just seems like she was tortured to set all this in motion in a regard but like because she's like yeah i was even forced to break my code which i'm wondering if that's going to be a through line for monkey or something like we'll have to wait and see maybe maybe not but, um, yeah, it just seemed like we are, like, like I said, not just leaning into the supernatural, like, the dark mysticism, whereas, like, we are de definitely dealing with some, like, devil stuff. I mean, especially with, uh, Bryce's deal with the devil and all this other stuff that's going on. Because the alderman, not, not the alderman, uh, Charles turned into something because it turns out he's got a item as well that it's like a was like a pendant or something he put inside of his throat and transformed him and he kind of had like a full like banshee like black canary type of scream that was literally popping heads and killing people didn't care he was killing everybody because he was talking about this whole like blood and sacrifice that needs to be so it seems like all these items revolve around that i mean as we saw in the past with Haruka's sword, like, that thing craves blood and death and destruction. That's what, once again, chicken or the egg, what happens? Like, was it the user that made the blade what it is, or was it the blade that made the user what it is? They didn't even have an opportunity to kill the guy because the little girl that's there with the headphones just ripped him in half. Oh, been uh, seeing people get ripped in half uh, a lot recently is kind of wild. Uh, so... 
Don't know what her circumstances are. She did take, like, the pendant and run, so... She was just at the party, so... I don't know, like, not unless she's, like, the centerfold of the Alderman's plan or something like that. When later on his body came back together, I was like, does he have a regenerative ability or something? I was like, didn't she take the... I was, oh, no, it's Bryce literally taking both halves of his body and kind of weakened at burning him a little bit. I was like, oh, that's wild. And like I said, harder to... Going on full blown killing spree, slicing through everyone she can. Um, managed to get out of that situation, but there are a lot of questions. How many items are there? Uh, who's really behind all of this? Um, we do get an answer to that to some extent. It seems like there's only three people left, which I thought was so fascinating because it seems like it's supposed to be an organization of eight, but it's like all of our brothers are dead. So it's like, interesting. Well, we know Monkey killed, well, Monkey's only killed one and that, oh, not less the other members are people we're just not aware of, but like the only person of note was like, uh, Bonsai Master. So that's the only person, uh, Monkey killed. So it's like, what happened to the others? Which I'm curious are we going to find out. This might be where Akiko comes into play. Maybe she had something to do. Once again, she's missing. So maybe she had something to do with the other members' deaths. But there's only three left. So all that was interesting. And I'm curious to see what everyone's thing is. Because we haven't really... The, the person who I was kind of like... Oh, it's kind of like almost... Evil shaman, but probably witch doctor would probably be another apt uh, description. But that person who was like in the center of uh, the conversation, they might, like I said last episode, I'm assuming they're the ones responsible for turning um, and that cat into that beast that came after Haruka. So, but the other two, what are their like? What are their like artifacts or whatever do? It's, it's a different situation, but it kind of makes me think of, like, the Kung Fu reboot on the CW. How there was, was it seven or eight items that they were all weapons? It seems like it's kind of something similar to that. We are talking about two different cultures, though. This is J Japanese versus, you know, Kung Fu is Chinese. So it was, like, oh, it's interesting uh, whether there's going to be any overlap. Because when it comes to Japanese mythology, I'm aware of, like, was it, the th it's, like, three items. I can't remember what it was, like in it like a, a sword a mirror and something else they're like three significant like there's three like there's like lore behind it, it, distinctly it's like a sword and a mirror and i can never remember what the third item is i don't think it's a shield i was like is it a is it a, a spear or something i don't remember what the third item is i looked it up really quickly the item the third item is a is a jewel so uh, I, once again, there's no correlation, but that's like, when, like Japanese wise, like that's what immediately, uh, came to mind. Um, so like I said, they're not like mythical items. I think they are real items, but I think it's just like, there's, I think mythological lore to them. I think if I'm not mistaken, either way, I, I wonder what, whether there will be any correlation or not. Be interesting if one of the items ended up being a mirror, considering one of them is in fact a sword. And I don't know, I mean, technically home dude's thing might count as a jewel. I don't know, but I'm wondering if like, if you have all eight items or they come together and give you like some, a mega, mega level power, just like the, like I said, seven or eight items from the Kung Fu series, the eight or nine, uh, seven or eight weapons from Kung Fu. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, we also had Monkey trying to get Bryce to see his daughter, uh, despite Bryce not wanting to. Uh, that whole conversation of like, yeah, you kind of smile and nod when people tell you something, and then you just kind of ignore it and do your own thing. He's like, well, this time, I actually want you to listen to no. And uh, Monkey tried to be like, oh, I know your dad. And she's like, oh, if you know him, tell him to fuck off. Like, I haven't thought about him in years. It's like, understandable. It's like, in your mind, he abandoned you. I don't know if she... I don't know if her mom ever told her the truth about their circumstances. She probably just thinks, like, he abandoned her. Um, I'm curious. I brought this up last episode, too. I'm curious if her mom's still alive or not. Because she might not be able to get any of those answers. And now it's too late because Bryce can't even really 
talk to her, you know, so she obviously doesn't know he's dead, and there's probably going to be a, a complicated feelings where she'll probably be like, good, I don't care, fine, let him be dead, but it's also like, yeah, any answers you were ever going to get might be going with him. Like I said, that all depends on if you, her mom's still alive or not. That hadn't really been brought up, so... And then finally we had Haruka giving in to the sword and now she's trying to kill Monkey. Talking about the blood and sacrifice and that Monkey's got a debt that needs to be paid. Uh, which is so interesting. I don't know if there's any correlation with like, you know, Bryce's deal with the devil. It seems like these are two separate things but it might all be connected in some shape or form. Which is interesting. He has a debt to pay and uh, she's talking basically it's kind of like a kind of bringing... I don't know if it's like a, oh, we're bringing forth a new world order that is going to be built off of blood, death, and sacrifice for something good, something evil. I don't know what to fully make of that, but I'm curious to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.